Hi, I'm Pierre with Honeycomb to go over the Honeycomb Observability Platform. When you start sending distributed tracing data to Honeycomb, you're getting a screen that looks like this. Total requests that come in, latency, and the error rates. You can also break this down by various popular dimensions like status code, the various different microservices that make up your application, route, error, and even very high cardinality things like user. Honeycomb encourages our customers to send things like user ID, product ID, even transaction ID. Because when you send these types of things, you'll never know when you find really interesting patterns. And Honeycomb's platform works great on high cardinality data. Let's go back to the overall tab. Now, when we're looking at this, we could see a spike in latency. But let's talk about this a little bit. In Honeycomb, when it comes to observability, what matters is that user's experience. Your users don't care if your CPUs are running hot. What they care about is how long it took the web page to load and whether or not that page gave them an error. Nines don't matter if your users aren't happy. And in Honeycomb, we want to bring that to the forefront. So what you see is latency and error rate, the things that matter to a user. And I can see I have a spike in errors that coincide with that spike in latency. Let's click on this chart and dig in a little bit more. Now, when I do that, we get a glorious heat map in its full detail. This query here is for four hours. And every single block on this heat map is about 30 seconds worth of time. So if you will, all those 30 second slices, like a bunch of 30 second histograms stacked all on each other sideways to produce a heat map. I can see my increased distributions down here and the anomalous ones over there. You get a little legend to help you understand the color of the block and how many requests each one represent. Now, clearly I found something that's interesting, this. And I wanna dig in and learn some more about what that is. And Honeycomb offers a unique feature called Bubble Up, which allows you to learn more. What Bubble Up does is you, as a human, tell Honeycomb, the machine, what you're interested in. And by making that selection right here, Honeycomb went off and went through all of the data on this chart and told me what's different from my selection versus the baseline. What's interesting is endpoint. 100% of all the requests in that selection is the exact same endpoint. Well, that's certainly very telling. The next one is name. Well, this just happens to be the endpoint prefixed by the HTTP verb, such as get, post, put. And in this case here, it's all get on that endpoint. The next dimension is user ID, one of those high cardinality fields. And when I hover over the big yellow line, I can see right here, I've got a single user 20109, who's responsible for nearly half of all the requests in my selection. This is also very telling. So by making a simple bubble up in Honeycomb, I've been given a lot of information about more, kind of telling me what's interesting, what's going on inside that spike in latency. And I'm gonna to wanna to continue that. What we call this is a core analysis loop where you ask the system a question, you get some answers, you form a thesis, and you continue asking more questions to validate that thesis. So let's go ahead and do just that. Now, because not all my users or not all my selections part of one user, I'm gonna to wanna to group on this right here. And because I wanna group, I'm gonna add a count to all this. So let's go ahead and add a count to our query. And we're gonna add user ID as one of those group fields. Now this endpoint over here, let's go ahead and filter on this endpoint. So we're just gonna click on it and say, show where field is value. You can see my query kind of built up with those values. Let's go ahead and run this. Now when I do that, I get a really different view. I'm gonna continue that investigation to what's going on. My heat map's a little different. It's filtered on that endpoint. So I only see how we hit it normally. And then that big spike in latency again. Down below is I have a count by user ID. And all these little spikes, these are all the other users doing one request each. And right here, I've got that same user, 20109, who's making quite a few requests, which seems to correlate with that spike in latency. I'm really getting to something here. And furthermore, Honeycomb will give you a data table between the charts, and you could hover over that data table to really validate what it is. And I can see that same user 
is responsible for all those requests in the charts. We kind of highlighted just what matters. You go over the other entries and you can see that this user here only made four requests over the entire time span. Now, the next thing I might want to do is dig into those individual requests and learn more. And you can go to the traces tab. Like other platforms, you'll get a list of the top traces that make up your view. But maybe I want to go to this one right there and go ahead and click on it. And Honeycomb will pull up the trace visually for that right there. And here we are with the Honeycomb tracing view. Now inside here, I can see what's going on with that entire request. As I click on different spans, we're going to update some details on the right. And I could see here how this request for the ticket backend service coincides with its peers. And it's really high up on that map. But when I look below at the individual DB requests, I can see they're really right in the middle. There's nothing really particular there. If all I did was looking at the DB service, I wouldn't find anything wrong. You really need to look at it as a whole and the entire transaction. And we can see here that clearly something's happening because we're calling this DB service quite a few times. It's probably what's causing our problems. Now, I know not long ago, we did a change to this application to help out smaller customers. Looks like maybe we introduced some weird regression for larger ones. And, and when you click on each individual span, we can also find the query behind each one. And continuing that core analysis loop, proposing, I can go ahead and click on this and group by this field. And what it'll do is it'll bring me right back to that same query view, allowing me to dig in some more. Now, because we're just looking at query, I'm going to go ahead and just say, hey, let's look at just the spans that have a query in it. And while we're at it, let's add a sum to the duration. When I run this, we're going to be looking at just the queries. What I see here probably isn't that interesting. And, and maybe I didn't really go down a path I wanted to go down because debugging is not something you're going to do with five mouse clicks. You need to ask questions of your system and get there. And sometimes you just go down the wrong path. And I just need to take two or three steps back and continue my analysis. But was that two steps or three steps? I'm not sure. In Honeycomb, we track your history. So every single query you ran is right here available for you to look at and see again. And you go ahead and run them any other time and kick back off your observability journey from there. But it's not just your query history. We also track your team's activity. So I can see how my team members are doing their observability as well. Maybe I'm coming in late to help with an incident. I can see what my team is doing and piggyback on their debugging journey. Or certainly when you're a new employee, you were told you have to shadow somebody. What better way to shadow than to see how you go ahead and debug production? And I can go and click on any of your queries and continue my journey from there as well. Now, all of this is possible because this URL right here is persisted forever with the query results. Even if your data ages out, you'll still get this exact view. And that's just one way to share your query, right? You could also add it to a board. You could also share it onto Slack. And when you do so on Slack, we're going to go ahead and unfurl the images or even in the tracing view. Or if you really want, you could make this a trigger. Triggers anonymous to an alarm or modern, whatever platform you're talking about. And these are great ways to make sure you're not going into the wrong place in the wrong world. But when you start adding a lot of triggers, you might get into something also known as alert fatigue, where alerts keep on going off and we're not sure if the sheep's crying wolf. For this, Honeycomb wants you to think about SLOs. SLOs help you focus in on what really matters for your business. Again, going back to user happiness. When you build a system, you've created some form of agreements with your customers, be them internal, external, or even within your own team. And when you say you're going to deliver a level of service, we call that the SLA. Maybe that service is all requests have to be served up in under 1,200 milliseconds or something like that. Let's go in and look at our SLO around that SLA. Now, to start measuring all this, we need to think about the service level indicator or that KPI we're going to use on how you measure it. In this case here, our KPI is pretty simple. 
if the duration of each request is under 1100 milliseconds, that's a pass. Otherwise than that, you failed. And the SLO takes that and says over a period of seven days, we want to achieve 99.98% of every single request pass. And from this, we form an error budget. And I could see here, I've got kind of a tight error budget, only about 17.7% .7 left. Maybe I want to do something. Maybe I don't. You know, maybe that's good and then we can fork it this fine. If your error budget goes below 0%, you might ask your engineering organization to perhaps pause on new feature development and spend some time on some stability instead. Because after all, if your users aren't happy, new features are not going to get them there. Beyond error budget, you see a historical compliance against this SLO, and we can see we're always well above our orange line down here of 99.98. Just above that, we see these, what we call exhaustion time or burn alerts. What these are is Honeycomb is consistently and always monitoring your SLO's budget. And if it takes a current trend and extrapolates it out by 24 hours or four hours, or whatever time you tell us, and it finds out that you're gonna go in negative in that time, it'll go ahead and alert you. So in our world here, this 24 hour exhaustion alert will go to Slack and a four hour one goes to page duty. Now below that, we've got a heat map. And this heat map here is made up of 24 hours worth of data. Now, we've introduced one additional color to this heat map, this yellow color you see right here. And what these are, is these are all the requests that failed our SLI. And as if I did a multi-select of grabbing all the yellow ones, and I did a bubble up, Honeycomb now tells me automatically why I'm burning that budget. And why I'm burning the budget is because that same endpoint that we looked at earlier against that same name. Now, before we were just looking at the front door, so we see service name right here. See, the front door is really responsible for the much of it anyhow. And that same user ID. So I could do the analysis on that spike, or I could just look at my SLO and Honeycomb would have told me the reasons why I'm burning my budget. Now, when we talk about observability, one thing you'll often hear people talk about is unknown unknowns. That's vastly different from monitoring. When you build a new service, you're gonna make a dashboard and you're gonna put six charts on there. And that's how you monitor it. Something goes wrong and none of your six charts solved it. Two more charts go on that dashboard, now you have eight. It's another incident something else, more charts. And eventually your six chart dashboard has got about 28 charts on it. And you've got about 20 of these dashboards because these are all the things that you now know about and you're monitoring them to go into an unknown state. That's the known unknowns. And Honeycomb, we're all about the unknown unknowns. I don't need, need to know to look at app endpoint or service name or this user. Honeycomb told me these are the dimensions. These are the things that I need to focus on. And this is my dashboard of unknown unknowns, always evolving, always changing based on what's happening inside my application and the user's experience. I hope you enjoyed this demo. Please give Honeycomb a try for yourself.